Hey, it's Matt from Custom Car Grills here with a mesh install for the Kia Stinger lower grill. Down in the description will be a link to a bumper removal video. And then this mod picks up right as the stock grill has been removed from the bumper. We're going to cut out the center of the grill and then the sides and replace this stock design with some hexagon mesh. When we flip this around, there's an interesting depth mismatch between these two areas that affects how this needs to be cut. I'll grab some quarter inch tape to handle this area and some others later on. We want to avoid cutting these tabs, so I'll place the tape directly above them and contour the tape around the top edge. Here's how mine looks with the tape in place. I did both the top and bottom edges and stopped the tape short briefly after they passed by the diamonds that are fully open. To do the cutting, I'll grab my Dremel and equip their number 543 cutting and shaping wheel. This bit will cut through the plastic easily, and with the tape line I can make some accurate cuts. The cuts should be made right up to the top of the tape line shown here, and the cutting wheel should not be cutting through the chrome tabs, at most maybe grazing them. Some portions may require a small cut from the front like this for the center to release out. If you need to make a cut like this, just be mindful of where the cutting wheel is so that you don't cut any of the grill frame that you don't want to. Another way to handle cuts that aren't quite deep enough is by using an open-ended handsaw like this one. Simple cuts through the areas that are stuck can be quickly made and a little less risky than the Dremel method. Once you feel that the center area will release out, then cut the solid area near where the diamonds end. It's important to note that the depth of the cut here, where it meets up with the tape line, should not be any deeper than the tape line itself. In short, the general rule of not cutting past the tape is still in effect here. And when it's cut out properly, then the center section can be removed and thrown away. Odds are, there will still be a couple remnants of the old diamonds still attached to the edge. Carefully cut these out while still keeping some distance from the edge. I have a little bit of these diamonds left, but not the whole diamond. Next up, I'll cut out the remainder of the center section. The cut can be made from the back by just cutting straight down like this. I'm staying about a quarter inch away from the edge so that I don't cut into the edge that's shown from the front. A few quick cuts is all that's needed, and then the old solid plastic area can be lifted out. Now it's time to apply another tape line this time in front of the grill. I'll apply this right up to the edge of where the stock grill diamonds meet the painted edge. The bottom edge shouldn't need any work at this point, and I'm only focusing on the upper and side area. Also, it might help to do this in a few segments of tape to get just the right contour. And here's how mine looks before the cut. The tape line is butted right up to the ends of the diamonds, and has a good curve to it that matches the factory curves. These upcoming cuts will be similar but different than the other ones that we did with the tape. These cuts are made behind the grill, just like what you're seeing here, and I'm cutting right up to the edge of the tape. In this case, the cutting is being done on the edge of the tape closest to the remnants of the old diamonds. I'll also be stopping the cut short a little bit as it nears the corners. It's also important to note that the depth of this cut should be no more than the thickness of the plastic. Don't forget that there's tabs on the back side here, and we don't want to cut through any of those. When the cuts are made properly, any signs of the old diamonds should be gone, and the cut on the top edge is ever so slightly past the chrome tabs, with the chrome tabs still fully intact. For the sides, I'm starting near the top corner and working my way down. The starting area was near the point where the cutting wheel would be touching the top edge. Since the top edge was stopped a little bit short, I'll now go back and cut a little bit closer to the edge, but again stopping before the wheel touches the edge. And then cut off the sections for the top and side edges like this. There's now going to be a small cut on the back for the corner to join the two edges together. This can be a tricky cut because there's no guide, but it can be done by aiming a little higher than the cutting depths on the edges just to get it started. Then use the top of the shaping wheel to whittle down the corner until it matches the depth of the other areas. Once this area is blended, then let's go back and remove the tape from the center section and turn our attention to the side sections. I'll yet again be using some tape as a guide, and in this circumstance the tape will be wrapping around the back edge very similarly to the initial cuts on the center section. 
The quarter inch tape is just about the perfect depth to cut through the bars and the stock grill while staying high enough to avoid the chrome tabs. This is a quick look showing how mine is wrapped all the way around before grabbing my Dremel again. I'll still be using the same cutting bit and cutting right up to the tape line just like how we did before. You might need a couple different angles of approach to get this cut made just right since we're dealing with such a small piece. But once it's cut all the way around, then the stock design can be taken off like so and thrown away. There's likely going to be some unevenness from the cut and the top of the shaping wheel can be used to shave down some of the transitions just with a few passes. Here's how mine looks from the front. If you ask me, this looks like a nice consistent depth that's left all the way around the openings. Those tape lines can really work wonders. We're nearing the end of the cutting phase and this is looking great so far. There's only a little bit left to handle on the back. There's some little splines on the lower edge that need to be shaved back closer to the edge. You can see some of them here, but there are several that span across the width of the lower edge. The top of the wheel is great for cuts like this. I'm just simply using a pushing motion to shave the plastic down so that it's almost right up to the solid edge. While this is a simple step, it's also an important one, so try and stay focused while we complete this. Before we move on, you might want to sand the edge on the back a little bit if anything is still uneven. This should be done with something around 180 grit, which is coarse enough to get a small high spot flat, but not coarse enough to the point where we're removing a ton of material. Okay, whew. all of the cutting is done and over with, and here's how my final cuts look. Everything seems good on the back, but where it really counts is from the front, and so let's check that out. And from what I can see here, it looks good, so I think we're ready for the mesh install. And speaking of which, here's a look at the mesh set that we have available on our website. This is pre-cut and pre-formed specifically for the Kia Stinger lower grill. All the right cuts have been made to our perforated quarter inch hexagon mesh, and all the right bends have been made too. This is finished off with a durable gloss black powder coat and the pieces are ready to install right out of the box. To install the center section, just lay the mesh piece on the back of the grill like this. Please note that the bit tabs face the front of the grill. For the side pieces, we need to first remove the screw that's near the edge. Then drop the mesh piece into place. There should be either a cutout or a hexagon that lines up with the screw hole. And once that's lined up, then screw that end of the mesh in place. There's a couple of things to look at before proceeding, and the first is with these bumper tabs. Take note of where the mesh is in reference to the tab opening so that we can keep these clear of the mesh that might be blocking the reinstallation. The other thing to look at is where the chrome tab is here. Just make sure that the mesh is not lifting up or touching that area. If everything looks all good, then let's grab some cable ties and foam. These will help with getting a temporary hold of the mesh flush up against the back of the grill. Place the foam on the chrome part so that it doesn't get damaged. Then feed the tail end of the tie through the front of the mesh and fasten it to the head of the tie while having the head of the tie resting on the back of the mesh. Work your way around the grill area until the mesh is sitting flush up against the back of the grill frame. For the center section especially, you want to make sure that the ties are on tight, but not so tight that you're distorting the grill frame. If the mesh isn't making good contact, then you might need to make some minor adjustments to get the results you want. These ties can be spaced a few inches apart, but it's important to get some in key areas like corners or the center. For the side area and the center section, you might need to press the mesh inward just a little bit like this. We can't really get a tie in this area, so it needs to rest in that spot flush with no tie. The top edge is really where some attention to the mesh placement will be important. Like I mentioned earlier, the mesh needs to contour around the back very tight so that the bumper tab is free and clear of any obstructions. Once you think you have it all tied together, then snip the ends of the ties off and check to see how it looks from the front. I don't see any gaps on mine, everything looks flush, so I think we're good to go. If there are any gaps, then this is the time to fix them before moving on. To bond the mesh and frame together, I'll grab some automotive goop, though faster drying adhesives such as plyo grip are a great choice too. With the goop install, I'll just hold the tip of the bottle up against the mesh and dispense directly through the hexagons onto the back of the grill frame. This is a quick and effective method for dispensing the glue, but it's important to note a couple things about this type of install. First is that the glue takes a long time to cure. Plan on having these tied up for a day. 
On the other hand, the plyo grip can cure in just 30 minutes, but the cost of that adhesive is much higher than goop, so there's a decision to be made about cost versus time. The other thing to note is that the goop will start to run down the edges if you don't have a fan blowing on it. Off to the side here, I have a small fan going that's preventing the goop from going anywhere. This is really an essential part of getting the install done right. I'll let this cure for a full day, and then I came back to cut off the ties and throw them away along with the foam. The installation is now complete. Let's flip this around and see how it turned out. Oh wow, this looks awesome! What a world of difference this makes compared to the stock grill we started with. The black hexagon design looks seamless, and the new high airflow design should look sick on this car. Here's a render of how this grill should look like on a Stinger. Overall, I had a good time with this mod. It seemed to be reasonable to do on a weekend with just a few tools and the end result was definitely worth it. If any mesh is interfering with the reinstallation of the grill back on the bumper, simply use some wire cutters to notch out the mesh as seen here to accommodate the bumper tabs. And well, that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions about it, just let me know and thanks for watching.